All right, so at this point, we have the Node.js application running using loopback. We use a strong loop to create our, our API. We also built a front end with Apache Cordova and Ionic, and it's talking to the local Node.js server. Now we're gonna do a couple of things. We're gonna go ahead and push up the application and host it up on IBM Bluemix. And then we're also going to set up a Cloudant service so we can actually store and save that data, okay? So I can use the website to create a new application, but instead I'm going to use the command line to do that instead. So before we do that, uh, I have to create a YAML file and I already have one created and this is the version that you will see up on GitHub, but I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the project I made earlier. It's called manifest.yml, paste it in, just kind of keep everything the same. I'm gonna call this SL Ionic one and use that host as well. Okay, so now that I have a YAML file, all I have to do at the command line is CF push. And it's going to send it up and actually deploy the application, create everything. Uh, first time will be a little bit slow because it's kind of starting from scratch. Uh, but all we have to do is just kind of stand by and wait for it. And you can see it's actually done uploading and now it is attempting to actually start the application. And before we do anything at all with Cloudant or anything, we'll actually confirm that it shows up in the Bluemix console and confirm that we can actually run it. And it looks like it's almost done. We'll see in a second. All right, it's really starting this time. Let's see. And it looks like we are good to go. All right, so let's go to the console here. I'm just gonna reload, oops. I'm going to reload and I should see a new application. I had 15 before. I should have 16 now. And it was called SL Ionic 1. So that's the one that we're going to look for. And there we go. And probably a little bit of caching there, but there's the application. And we can click and load the dashboard. Cool, and let's just make sure it's actually working. And boom, there we go. All right, so again, with the command line, we simply pushed up the local application. We added one file to kind of tell Bluemix how to start the application up. Uh, and that's essentially it. So it's, it's running, it's live on Bluemix now. So again, I wanna add Cloudant. So I'm gonna add a service and it's gonna give me the service catalog and I'm going to focus on Cloudant. All right, top here to search Cloudant. And there we go. So we'll go ahead and add this. And we'll take all the defaults. We don't really have to modify anything. Let it finish uh, working on it. It's getting there. There we go. All right. So it's creating that service and it's also gonna go ahead and automatically bind it to the application I just created. And by the way, the command line actually supports doing all of this as well. 
All right, so we're going back to the dashboard for the application. And yes, I'll go ahead and let it restage. And basically it's just reloading with the service bound. Now, while it's restaging, I wanna go ahead, oops, and I wanna start working with Cloudant. I wanna go to Cloudant's dashboard to kind of begin setting things up. So I'm gonna launch that. And if you've never seen Cloudant before, it's pretty easy to use. I myself am pretty new to it, but uh, I find it pretty cool and uh, pretty simple. So we're gonna create a new database and we will call it something. We'll call it SL Ionic, SL Ionic like so. Now, because I kind of already know how Loopback is going to want to communicate with Cloudant. I know that it's going to want a admin user, a reader user, and a writer user. So what I'm going to do is start working with the security on this. And that's not it. I always forget what the darn thing is. There we go, permissions, all right. So I'm going to create a new API key and we are going to make note of these values, okay? Now note where it says here, it's gonna hide this. Now, when we get back to the code, I'm gonna use my production value, so it won't matter. Uh, but you typically want to copy this down. Now this key here is a reader automatically so we are good to go and I'm going to generate a new one and this one will be a reader and a writer okay so essentially what we have here is we have a user that is an a, a administrator one that's a reader and one that's a reader and a writer and again all this is kind of hooked up automatically to our Bluemix application in case you're wondering about the password for the admin, if I go back to my overview for the application and click on show credentials, and by the way, I'm gonna be deleting all this, so I'm not worried about, oops, not worried about you seeing it. Click show credentials, and it's gonna show me essentially everything. Any second now. There we go. So note that we have a host and we have a username and password. And all this is going to be important in a few seconds when we get back to uh, the Node.js side. So again, right now we have Clouded. It's hooked up to the application. And all we have to do then is kind of tell uh, Loopback how to talk to it. Now, luckily, there is a module for that, Loopback Connector Couch. I can go to my command line and do npm install dash dash save loopback connector couch. And this will actually add that connection to the, the uh, loopback. And that's it. We go back in SLC composer and go into arc and I'm going to reload and actually so be, before we can use this we have to define the data source now out of the box loopback supports Oracle MS SQL MySQL Postgres Mongo and the in memory one as well in order for me to tell it that it supports Mongo uh, I'm sorry that it supports Cloudant I need to edit a file called data sources.json now I've already got the proper stuff here and I could literally just copy this. Now I'm going to use my production one and again I'm going to modify these values and paste it right there and make that valid JSON. So all I did here was basically point to uh, the credentials that I created earlier. And Again, admin, reader, and writer. I save this and if we reload, that probably won't do it. I'll probably have to restart SLC, but we'll see. 
and no, it picked it up automatically, cool. So I can go into my models and simply change it, save it, and bam. My feed item, which was using an in-memory database, is now talking to Cloudant. And we can even see this locally. So I'm gonna, first I'm gonna restart, loop back, all right, it's good. Come back to the Explorer and just reload for the heck of it. Don't really need to do it, but I just want to. And try running it, and we should have a couple of items. Now, I just made this Cloud and Database, but I'm actually using my production server, so that's why you're seeing some existing items. Uh, so this is coming from the final version of my Cloud and Service, and I had some data there already. But I can go ahead in here and create a new one just for the heck of it. And we'll say in demo and in demo test. And then just try it out. And literally, it actually ran from my local copy of the Node.js application, talked to my remote Cloudant, and stored it. And that is it for the setup. Now we can go back and we could do CF push to update the code for production and you're good to go. The literal last thing that we need to do is go back into our Ionic code and to the front end and change this URL to point to the production server. Now, luckily, I already have this, and it is, I'm gonna look at my manifest file, SL Ionic Final, mybluemix.net. So we will do this, mybluemix.net, and make it HTTPS, and that's it. Now I go back to my command line and I could retest this with the front end. Let's go into mobile app final. And then we could send it back to the emulator. And now this should show some new data and not the in memory system. And boom, <laughs> there we go. So. You saw us build the application, that took a couple of minutes. You saw us build the front end, that took a couple of minutes. Admittedly, I skipped over actually writing the code in front of you, but it was pretty simple code. You saw us pushing to Bluemix. You saw us creating a cloud instance and setting up some authentication. You saw us go back to the Node.js application and add support for Cloudant with Loopback. And literally, that was it. Hope you liked it.